average size of a female human heart is only approximately 8 ounces, and this 8 ounce muscle is responsible for beating over 100,000 times per day, pumping 2,000 gallons of blood in order to maintain life. Now this worries me a bit. I'm not too confident that the amount of stress I've applied to this muscle during my life thus far is very nurturing to the health of something only half the size of my normal drink order at the local brewery. <laughs> As a case in point, let's turn the dial back a few years to a very warm day in mid-June. Camel! I exclaimed rather loudly, I'm afraid. My husband jumped. I grabbed my camera, and the driver of our car muttered what I assume was an expletive in Hindi. His horn quickly joined the chorus of blaring honks, and he whipped our car around the said camel at full speed without a touch of his brakes. My heart skipped two, maybe three beats. What the hell is a camel doing in this insane downtown bumper to bumper traffic? Then again, we'll just add another tally mark to the list of animals seen on this ride today. Cows, pigs, oxen, goats, and quite curiously, one black bear sitting on a box at the side of the road attached to a leash and eating bananas. <laughs> I took a very deep breath trying to calm myself. Deep breathing turned out to be pretty unsuccessful on this humid 180 degree day. So I wiped my sweaty palms on my damp skirt and silently offered a quick prayer. Please God, not today. It would be a cruel joke. Snuffing out my life in the back of a very pungent, non-air-conditioned sedan, moments from the culmination of my journey. My journey to motherhood. My seventh year journey. I pointed my camera out the window and continued to document this unbelievable journey that the quest for motherhood had taken me on. Here I was, 9,000 miles away from home, with a death grip on my husband in the back seat of a taxi cab in Calcutta, India. Me, the woman who needs three Xanax pills and a touch of Chardonnay, just to board a plane from Colorado to California. <laughs> Somehow I had made it here to our destination on the opposite side of planet Earth. My journey to motherhood never did follow my initial plan. That's right, I had a plan. My plan included nine months of feeling the miracle of life growing inside me, having an excuse for my late night snack habit, and cute, stretchy clothes. I was dying to shop at Pee in a Pod. <laughs> what my plan did not include? Monitoring my body temperature to a tenth of a degree at 6 a.m. every morning and plotting the result on a bar graph. <laughs> Morphing my social circle from the cocktail hour crowd to the fertility friend online support group crowd. Sticking needles in my stomach daily for months. And it most definitely did not include undergoing several procedures described as uncomfortable. <laughs> when a more accurate description would be humiliating and slightly torturous. My days became filled with the high which comes from a new cycle of hope or with the heartbreaking devastation of yet another failure. As the years progressed and the disease barring my entrance from the mommy club also progressed, my hopeful days dwindled. The fertility roller coaster was taking its toll. Finally, a cancer scare and emergency hysterectomy put an end to my plans of giving birth. <coughs> as sad as that time was for me, it was also a time of new hope. After year five of fertility fanaticism, my husband and I had decided to also apply for an international adoption. And it was just before my surgery that we were matched with our baby. Our baby. She was real. She was beautiful. She was so very far away. <laughs> now, in that ungodly hot taxi cab, with my hair expanding to at least ten times its normal density, <laughs> and the back of my blouse sticking quite uncomfortably to the faux leather seats, I was on my way to meet my daughter for the first time. As we drew closer to the orphanage, I tried to etch every moment into memory, every sensory input being filed away so I could relive this experience over and over again in the future. The kaleidoscope of colors popping from the sari market, skinny, dusty old men pulling rickshaws, the modern office buildings next door to the dusty, open-air medical practices. The sounds and smells of India are constant and cloying, but even the stench resonating from the waste alongside the roads was something that I did not want to forget. This was my child's homeland. I wanted to immerse myself in it. I wanted to remember everything so I could share this with her until the moment that she could return and experience it herself once more. Finally, we arrived at the orphanage. 
we were met by a nondescript concrete building with a large imposing black gate surrounding the first floor. With a quick warning regarding our safety, a guard rushed us out of the cab and swiftly through the gates, again increasing my adrenaline level to an unsafe level. We were then led up a long flight of narrow, dimly lit marble stairs. At the top, the stairs opened into a room filled with tiny crows and crying babies. Several Indian women bustled about, calling back and forth in a language completely foreign to me. And suddenly, there she was, all 11 pounds of her. Not unlike Dr. Seuss's Grinch, I felt my heart immediately grow three sizes as I took her in. Clad only in a diaper and a tiny blue t-shirt with thumb in her mouth, a little angel peacefully sleeping, no idea that her life as she knew it was no more. In mere minutes, she would be torn from her small cramped home and sent off into a bright, loud, mind-boggling world with people she had never before laid eyes on. People who didn't look familiar, sound familiar, or even smell familiar. It was a vast world outside of these tiny rooms where she had spent every single day of her first nine months. As I watched her caretaker reach into the crib, pick her up, and hold her up for me to see, she awakened, but she did not cry. It was I who was crying. Soundless tears streaming down my face. Here I was in the moment that I had waited over seven years to experience. This moment that was worthy of every minute of the wait. My heart was at once overflown with the most amazing, indescribable feeling of joy while at the same time, it was breaking into a million tiny pieces for her. It was at this moment that I knew, I now have the heart of a mother.